I think this uh, system of traditional medicines, uh, which we have been talking about uh, for a very long time, hasn't really been integrated into the allopathic uh, system of public health care. And therefore, I think this workshop is absolutely essential from that uh, context. Integration uh, for JNU is a key word now. Uh, integration in education, in different fields of research, in different, and in practice. Now, why this is important uh, is because uh, the way the knowledge is expanding, and the rate at which this knowledge is expanding, even in my own field, I have seen that even the small areas of research activity have in fact uh, grown into <coughs> full-fledged fields of research by themselves. So even in the area of plant sciences in which I practice, there are some people who only look at the root biology. And there are others who will look into the leaf photosynthesis. There are others who look into the flowering system and so on and so forth. And if you talk to a person who has been working into the molecular biology or the basis of flowering and ask him, how does the root grow and develop? He said, I don't know, ask a root biologist. And this is what is happening because it is very difficult to keep in touch with the literature, in the total literature. And therefore, from this point of view, we lose the context. If we're talking about plant biology per se, you will have to have knowledge of all the organs of the plant. And this is something that uh, I find has happened to medical science also. The specializations have grown to such an extent that if you go to an orthodontist and tell him that he wants to do something else, he said, no, you go to another dentist. Even at that small level, they don't want to touch you from uh, other angles. Similarly, a person who is looking after the heart, he doesn't know what's happening to the kidney. By and large, they know. But there always the tendency is to refer you to one specialist or the other specialist because the fields or the research in these areas have grown beyond limits. So it's extremely important from that context that uh, one takes an interdisciplinary approach to resolve uh, many global issues. Public health is a global issue now. In fact, I was uh, recently in uh, Germany, in Frankfurt, this is an uh, inter-India-German co consultative group which has been constituted by the government of India. I didn't know the existence of it. Uh, it's been there for the last 10, 15 years. But only lately, the PMO said that you be a part of this. And then also one was discussing about the global issues and also the bilateral issues which need to be resolved. Not only uh, by individuals, but it will have to be a collective group. And these issues are like issues in environment, issues in agriculture, and uh, very importantly, issues in public health. And these are all related issues. In fact, I was recently reading an article where they said that uh, if you do not take care of agriculture, you will have nutrition problem. You have either malnutrition or you have obesity. So both becomes problem of okay? a uh, food intake. And uh, that gets then related to public health. So we feel uh, JNU, that was the basis on which uh, JNU had laid its foundation. Interdisciplinarity was the foundation of JNU, both in teaching as well as in research activity. And uh, we feel that uh, the crosstalk amongst different disciplines uh, is something which will foster creative academic environment, which will develop synergies, which will uh, give solutions to complex problems, and therefore the artificial boundaries between subjects, between disciplines, I feel they must disappear. You keep your, your own area, but uh, read also about what's happening in the other areas, integrate with them. And uh, we have to, I think the situation of uh, world uh, knowledge and uh, research is such that uh, we have to come out of our own prisons, prisons of beliefs and limited knowledge. 
I think that is where we actually we imprison ourselves uh, in those things. I think we must get out of those ones. So from that perspective, I feel uh, this particular workshop, because I like the word integration, you know, so <laughs> that's what I believe in, integrating different subjects, different fields, different systems, uh, practices, uh, it's very, very important. I was reading that uh, even in uh, Europe, in USA, in the Western world, they have now started feeling the importance of traditional medicine as well as uh, what we call as uh, complementary and alternative medicine, the TM and CAM. These are the two terminologies which you people use. I think these, their need is now being felt even in uh, outside world. But if you go by the statistics, even in Asia or even Africa, they say even 70 to 80 percent people are still dependent on TM and CAM for their day-to-day -day, uh, medical uh, practices. So there is something which is there. Otherwise, the people would not have trust on this system. Although, as scientists, we'll have many questions about it. But the trust which people have, I, I, I know that even once people fail in the allopathy treatment, they tend to go to TM. They say, OK, maybe something will come out of it. So that trust factor goes on to TM or into care. Uh, I have a personal example of uh, my own uh, sister-in-law. She lived in the United States for uh, more than uh, 30 years. And in 1988, when I was in US, she developed a liver cancer. The allopathic system, the doctors there, the surgeons and others, they said we have three months to live. So they called me, I went to them, and uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. When the allopathic system, the surgeons and others fail, somehow you tend to move into this TM. So one of the persons said there is somebody in India who treats these ones. Here's some medicines. I really don't know what the ingredients are. That is the bad part of it, that we still don't understand uh, how these systems work. So the med medicine was uh, sent from India to her. Uh, she kept some allopathic treatment alive, but at the same time took the TM. Today she's alive. After 25 years, she's still working. She drives, she goes everywhere. She has problems, don't say, but she's alive. In fact, she has become a model for many of the hospitals in California where she lives, and she goes every week to that hospital to tell people how to survive beyond these delicate diseases. So that's where somewhere this integration of these medicines, TM and uh, can have to be. <coughs> the only problem with uh, traditional medicines, there are many issues which are working in this country, uh, that we have lack of clinical trials on these ones, which need probably to be done. We still don't understand the active ingredients in many of these uh, medicines and also the regulations. I think all of you are involved in these things, how to regulate uh, these uh, TM and other things. So these are the issues I'm sure you are all going to discuss uh, in this uh, workshop. I wish I could sit through. Uh, I have some interest in this. I have been a member of uh, Central Institute for Medicinal Aromatic Plants, NBRI. I've been going there and uh, talking to them with Ayush group. I think sometimes we had uh, discussions on these. Uh, so I have some general interest, especially as a botanist. Uh, I look at plants also as a medicinal plants, so that interest is alive. I wish I could go through uh, uh, some of the talks, maybe in between if I find time, uh, I may drop in. I wish uh, this uh, workshop all the success and uh, again congratulate all the partners, especially your partners from Germany uh, who have uh, come all the way and uh, organized this meeting as well. All the best.